for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right. Welcome, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, and tonight, a very special presentation. That's right. We are doing a Friday night special tonight. Our guest is Melissa Tittle. We're going to be discussing those mummies uh, from down in Peru. We're going to do a pretty good deep dive tonight. And I, I, I want to I want to start off with this before I get into a long introduction and and all of those things. Let me let me say a few things here that um, this story, uh, this research, and this investigation uh, kicked off back in uh, late 2000, uh, 2017, uh, going into very early uh, two thousand eighteen. That's when things started and got pretty in depth. And I was uh, contacted uh, by a couple of the researchers that were involved with this at that time. And I was told, I'm not going to uh, discuss this uh, tonight with Melissa, well, maybe a little bit, but but I was told to, to get ready that there's possibly something uh, pretty huge about to break. And there was going to be some international travel involved, and they would be reaching back out to me. Now, I get that kind of email every day. Um, but I know the source of this, and, uh, and, and I'll just say this right now. It was Jay Widener. And now when Jay tells me something like that, I'm going to pay attention. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, I was provided... Uh, with some images th that uh, I was pretty shocked when I saw them. Man, I'm speaking specifically of uh, Maria. And I'm looking at the images and, uh, you know, a couple of phone calls and some texting and some email back and forth uh, talking about this. Uh, it was shortly after that. I decided that the investigation was pretty solid. I, I, I'd seen the video that uh, they started to put together, and and uh, I decided to break the news. So I did, and I broke the news on Fade to Black, and I broke it on Coast to Coast. And, and nearly immediately, the story, the videos, the, the view counts, uh started off in the tens of millions. Uh, I remember when it hit 75 million. Uh, it was like a week later. It was at 150 million views. And a lot of research and a lot of money back then in 2018 was was put into this to get to the bottom line of everything. And um, it was medical analysis. It was DNA analysis. All it, 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 which is all tremendously uh, expensive. I don't know what was spent, but uh, and I'm not going to say. Well, I've heard things uh, because I have. But but let's just say this kind of research is expensive, and I wouldn't be surprised if the number was between five hundred thousand and maybe a million dollars that was spent in medical analysis and DNA analysis into all of the mummies. There was a lot of very serious research uh, that was done. And so uh, with that, um, we know what happened. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jaime Musan uh, does this uh, uh, presentation in front of the Mexican Congress. And uh, I didn't know what was about to happen. And the the mummy story for me uh, and, and for the rest of the community is now it's five, six years old. And I didn't know that that's where this was going. So I'm watching. Uh, I'm live with Christina Gomez and we do 
uh, a four and a half hour show, and it was great. But anyway, uh, you know, about halfway through that, and they wheel those mummies out on stage, I was like, oh, no. Now, and the reason for that wasn't if they are real or fake or hoaxed or alien. None of that matters. I just know about the drama and everything that I had gone through five or six years ago. All of this now was going to come back. And that was my face palm. It was like, here we go again. This time around, and I was surprised that the lack of media attention, there was some back in 2018. But uh, today, I started to get text from friends and family and people that, that are close to me that are not part of our community asking me about these mummies and if they are really alien. That it got out into the media very quickly and social media. Uh, and I didn't think that that would happen. And it did. And the debate has resurfaced as well. I'm still in the middle. I don't know. I haven't done any analysis on this. I haven't seen a- any of the mummies for myself. Of course, Melissa Tittle has. And so before I bring Melissa in, I want to let you know, I've been working with Melissa uh, quite closely uh, for 10 years. Um, she has produced or directed uh, a TV and film with me. Uh, she's an amazing filmmaker. Uh, she's an amazing researcher. Uh, and she's a very close friend. I've done a lot of traveling with her uh, over the last couple of years and a lot of work and a lot of production. And for more than a decade, she has been doing just that. It's motion pictures. It's television. Um, she wants to figure out what's going on. She does the deep dive into everything that is mysterious and, you know, that that hidden forbidden knowledge. She is currently the creative CEO for Hather Studios. Uh, They specialize in films and TV shows and short form content about meditation, human potential, aliens, science fiction, and ancient civilizations, all that and much more, of course. She has produced and written TV shows for several major networks. Uh, She worked on Chelsea Does, Escaping the Prophet, Ancient Aliens, The Universe, and of course, Hangar One with me. She was an assistant to the head of production at Paramount Studios, assigned to such features as Star Trek, Cloverfield, and Mission Impossible 2. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, the one and only, and there she is, Melissa Tittle. Melissa! I love my intro. Thank you, Jimmy. That's so sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. You and I, we've been around the world, man. We we, we truly... (laughs) We truly have been around the world, and uh, it's it's been a great fun run, and uh, mm-hmm. I feel that we're just starting, too, which is the crazy part. We've been doing this now for 10 years. Um, now, uh, welcome back uh, when, <laughs> let me start here, because <laughs> you and I- The story is uh, so crazy. I can't wait for us to dive into all the nitty-gritty <laughs> that nobody knows about. That is the whole purpose of this special. Yeah, that's that's the whole purpose of this. And and let everybody make up their own minds. So let's just let's just present Agreed. what we know. Um, mm-hmm. before um Jaime did his thing uh with Congress, you and I were over in England, and we yeah. happened to be uh, out to dinner with a group of of our friends, and the subject comes up out of the blue. You remember that? And and suddenly, oh God, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 so you and I and and everybody uh, was so interested in it, but we didn't know what was about to kick off. You know, the week after we got back, which was this was just two weeks ago over in the UK. Um, yeah. And then, boom, we had that conversation over there, and it was it was it was a lot of fun to see how everybody was engaged and they had questions about it. Um, mm-hmm. And then we come back, and here we are, two weeks later, live on Fade to Black, <laughs> discussing this. When you, you never know what the future brings. Um, yep. Now, I mentioned to you, and you heard me say that I mentioned this to you earlier, um, and I know you heard the intro. Um, when I was watching the uh, presentation by Jaime Musan and his team and the mummies get wheeled out, I face palmed. I was like, oh, no, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
get ready, <laughs> buckle up. Did you do the same thing? Yeah, I actually actually did this. I was like, ah, like I, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I, I actually didn't know. That's what a to good say. reaction. Yeah. Right, I was like, no, and why is Ryan Graves there? I, I was so, I just, I had lots of questions, um, which um, we'll get into some some connections to all of that. But, but yeah, I had that that kind of feeling, and and the crazy thing for me, Jimmy, is that when I mean, I don't know if you're getting this at all, but when I say to people, you know, this was this is a story back from 2017, and this is kind of a continuation. Of, they're like, "Why have we never heard of this?" As, as if I'm making it up. I'm like, "Did the yeah. Mandela effect happen? Did right, some, did we just right. erase 2017, 2018, and, and all the findings and all the people making the documentaries about how it was fake, and then our stuff coming out from Gaia? You know what I mean? Like." Do people just erase that? I, I don't know. It was so weird. There's just a whole generation of people that have just didn't, have never heard of it. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing how the human species has amnesia, like for real. I mean, like, mm -hmm. like for real, real. It's it, it's a psychosis. And now let's let's do this. Let's back up um, and uh, take me back to 2017. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, I've tried to explain this to everybody. I was in a very <laughs> unique, unique position back then. And, uh, one fade to black two, of course, coast to coast, um, mm -hmm. three, my relationship with so many people over at Gaia, this is before I'd done mm -hmm. any production with Gaia. We're just family and friends, right? And, and that's it. And, and I got a whiff of this. And I was told uh, uh, about the team and, and you and, and everybody that was uh, uh, going down to Peru. And I was like, this is, this is going to be very big. Let's go back to that time. When did you first hear about it and what went through your head? Uh, so it was 2017. Um the it, it, uh, we got a call from Jaime. Um, and Jaime was speaking to uh, Jay Widener and to uh, a couple, uh, the owner of the company of Gaia, and uh, they felt that this was really important. They wanted to see if it if it had any merit. You know why not? You know it sounds like it, this sounds like a pretty compelling story, but let's just go down there and see and see what it is. That was kind of the thing. So it was kind of no big deal. It was like. I saw a picture of it. I was like, that looks kind of fake. I don't know, but you're right. Luke. we should go check it out. You know, that was my first instinct taking a look. Now, at which, it. which, now, which image did you see first? Did you see Maria or did you no, see the Cusco? I saw, I saw the heads. So if you remember correctly, there was a bunch of uh, little pieces that were coming out. So for instance, in 2000, uh, let me back up to 2016. So in 2016, a, a character that I cannot remember his name, but he came out and he made like a whole YouTube stink about the fact that he found a three finger hand in Peru. He did a whole conference about it. People were taking pictures of it. Uh, the Ministry of Culture got involved and they ruled it as a hoax and a fake and he got arrested. So that was 2016. I, rem I, I remember that. And 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 uh, that was all over the internet in 2016, actually. I mean, I think at one point... Um, Gary Nolan got involved and he's like, you can see why it's fake, right? Like there was a whole bunch of debate about it. 2017 happens. Uh, we get whiff of this, these, these bodies that have been found in Peru. Um, and we don't see the bodies, but we see the heads. There's like these weird alien heads. Um, and that was kind of the first, like, okay, apparently Jaime's saying they have, they have lots of bodies. And so we thought, yeah, it was, just go down there. So I did not go down the first trip. So I was definitely involved in the conversations from a Gaia perspective as like, Hey, this is what we're thinking about doing. Um, that was Jay Widener and a crew and they made the first trip down there. And they, um, I mean, I can't speak for Jay cause I wasn't there, but, but they did meet with the person who's kind of behind it. His name's Mario. I don't know if that's his real name. Um, and he kind of deals with well, Caros, or he might be one. <laughs> We're not quite sure. Um, and from that, they presented uh, two small bodies. 
and then they wanted to they wanted uh they wanted to they wanted more money for a, they said they found a bigger body now this this bigger body is what people refer to as maria so if you're listening to this and you've never heard what we're breaking down you're only used to seeing these smaller bodies which are about two feet tall um, but Maria, which is not part of this Mexican congressional hearing, this, yes, thank you. Um, this was a very interesting specimen because, um, it just had more to look at like the smaller bodies. I don't think anybody could wrap their head around that. So this, this became the beginning of, of the investigation because now we had several smaller bodies. We had two heads. And then we had um, we had Maria, and then we had something called uh, like a baby that they called Wawita, which means baby in the native language. Um, and that was the beginning of my involvement actually going in the field. At that now, point, and, and this is this is Maria, everybody, and she was kind of like um, in a uh, if you can describe it as a fetal position. You could see her knees are up to her chest. She's got mm -hmm. her arms uh, wrapped around her, and mm -hmm. and and her head is tilted. Um, this is one image. Here is uh, these are just quick images. Um, here's another image, and you can see the three fingers coming down. There's one, two, three, four joints where we have three on our fingers. Okay, so you can clearly see four and a fifth one down here on the fingertips. Um, and uh, is this you right here? Is that you no. standing there? No. Okay. So this is when this picture is taken when I was not there, when they, when they presented, we'll say Mario and team brought and said, okay, here's the body that, that, uh, here's, here's this bigger body that we found and they presented it. And there were some scientists there. Uh, one of the scientists was, um, a Russian doctor named Korokov. Um, he, he was there, uh, to, if he needed to take samples or, or pictures or any of that kind of stuff. So this was the beginning of, okay, we have all these bodies. Now we really want to bring a team in. Remember these things are in pieces because you go down there. I mean, again, I wasn't there on this trip yet, but you go down there and as a, as a group of people investigating stuff, you kind of just want to see like, what is it before you decide to bring scientists and doctors and all this kind of stuff into it? Because you really just want to see. So this, that picture is taken from here's the body. What do you think? That's when that and and, and and now I want everybody to understand a couple of things as we move forward. Maria came from the location of Nazca. The other mummies came from the region around Cusco. Two separate areas, two different locations, two different sets of research. Um, two distinctly uh, uh, different uh, types of mummification and, and position of the bodies, dramatically different in size, where Maria, and you can clearly see in this image here, Maria is ginormous. She's big. She's, she's like... She's like five... Sitting. She used to stand up. She'd be five seven. Yeah, five seven. Where the yeah. other mummies, and we'll b bring up some images in a second. Those are sixty centimeters, right? They're like this yeah. big, right? A two totally different situations here. So, mm -hmm. when you hear us talk about Maria, now you know what we're talking about. We're not talking about the little, the little mm -hmm. guys uh, from Cusco. Maria is known as a Nazca mummy. Okay, so with that, when you flew down. Um, I wanted to, my question, and, and by the way, everybody, trust me, Gaia was really getting tired of me. I was just emailing every day questions and lists and things and, and what's going on. Um, and, and you guys were pretty good at, at responding to me, but the research takes a while. And I wanted, I wanted DNA evidence today. You know, I want to, you know, I've, I've yeah. got a show to do. <laughs> Um, and, but we're talking about trips back and forth to Peru and mm -hmm. everything that was involved with this. So let's fast forward. You fly down. What happens? So I fly down. Um, I meet with Jaime Musan. He brings a, he brings a Mexican 
biologist. I believe he's a biologist. We also are accompanied by a surgeon from the Navy from Mexico. Um, with me is... I believe Constantine comes back on this trip with me. Um, and I think that's it. There's a couple people from Peru. There's a doctor from Peru who's involved. There's a journalist named Joyce from Peru that gets involved. Um, and then there's the institute that's holding the bodies, which is now in Cusco. And this is the Incari Institute run by Terry who is a French archaeologist, not sure if his background really lines up, but um, from the papers he showed us, he said that he was an archaeologist. There is some, there's some questionable things with him as a character. We can get into that a little bit, but um, so this is where the bodies are being held. Uh, at this point, as I'm arriving, the, uh, Terry writes a letter to the Ministry of Culture and says, we have these smaller bodies and we have this big body and what we think is a small baby, Wawita, right? We really would love you to be involved. Um, we'd love you to take a look at it and, and give us your opinion. Now, remember in 2016, they had the guy with the hand, he got arrested that like mm -hmm. hoaxed the whole hand that that was proven that that was fake. So the ministry of culture didn't respond at all. There wasn't response at all. Um, I believe uh, Jaime reached out to somebody to see if anybody in the Ministry of Culture was attached to this. There definitely was a, a person who was supposed to look into this case, but they never responded. Uh, this is not something that they want to be involved in. They don't want to encourage people to uh, mutilate bodies or dig them up uh, because this is, this is a direct hit on their heritage. It's very insulting. So, um, But the purpose was, hey, if we're looking into it, you, you as Peru should, should look into it. We don't have anything to hide, which I thought was a really good move. I like for me flying in there for the first time, I thought, I don't know who all these characters are. I'm about to meet all of them in their setting, but, but, but that's a good move. I mean, we're not here to hide anything. We're here to um, give it, give it to the people. And it's not for us to just investigate or for one person to investigate. So that, that was the beginning of, of my trip. So I'm there. Um, and I meet all the characters and it is, it is quite a cast of characters and I don't really know what to make of it. You know, like I'm talking a little bit about personal story now because, uh, I, I no longer work for Gaia. Um, and I don't, I don't like, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't a place to say people aren't credible, but, but there just was, a, it just felt like there's a lot of shenanigans going on. And, and I thought, okay, well, let's get to the bodies. Let's get to what we came here to do. Um, and, uh, they're they're just they don't they didn't want us to take too many samples right so the whole point was not us but but the doctors were there to kind of analyze the bodies take some samples they wanted to get it into an x get it into an x-ray to a cat scan and all this is good but but the whole process of it happening was it just felt very strange like if this is what we're here to do why is it so difficult and the difficulty was this mario character was wanting to control everything that we were doing and wanting more money so that that to me was a bit of a red flag but i have always to say is. always a red flag um uh you know i you know i think we just kind of kept pushing back like well we're all here you know that kind of thing and and you know, I love Jaime Musan. I, I think he's 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 great. He's he's uh he's been in this field for a long time, but but he's really excited. And so <laughs> I mean every I think the doctors in the group were like, this is about science, this is not about saying it's an alien. So um that's one thing I can say that the the that the vibe that was there. So I get there. All these characters have all these opinions. We're waiting for Mario to kind of make this final decision. Meanwhile, what I want to bring to your attention that is happening at the same time, that that our crew is not privy to what's happening, is that the same group of people, Mario and possibly Terry, I have to, to verify that, reach out to Steve Mara and Barry. Uh, Steve Mara Bar and Bar Barry Fitzgerald. Barry Fitzgerald. Yeah. They're in the UK. Yep. 
and they say, hey, could you come out here and, you know, you should be in part of this story. By the way, none of our team knows this. We think we're the only ones covering it. Uh, so I find this out later. I spoke to Steve uh, a couple days ago because I said, you know, we've never even talked about the mummies. I really want to hear your version of the story. So what they were doing was they were having these other journalists come in and pay them money or they, you know, pay their pain to look at the bodies and, and do their own analysis of what's happening um, while we're doing our investigation, thinking we're the only ones that have the story. And the only reason we found out about it is because they broke a story as we were breaking one. And we were like, how did they get there? <laughs> so that to me, another red flag. Of course, that didn't come out till later. Um, so, so one of the things that uh, the DNA takes a long time. So it, samples, there's a, you, every time you take a sample, you're asking one question of of one question what is that question and then you put it into the machine so when people when archaeologists or, or anthropologists are doing um sampling on dna they sort of need a lot of it because they're asking a lot of questions right and um so let me back up so we go through that process we go through the x-rays and the cat scans in peru with the help of a peruvian doctor I then take those CAT scans and x-rays back to America. Jaime has some. He works with his crew in Mexico, uh, a bunch of doctors who are analyzing the structures of not only the small bodies, but the big bodies. And um, I speak to some American doctors who, 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 um, who find Maria really interesting. Nobody can really say anything about those small bodies because they're just so awkward. Like, how do they move? Like there was a lot of like hesitation about like the smaller bodies, but Maria was of interest to a lot of people because, okay, she seems to have a human body, but the fingers and, and, and the toes and the elongated head, um, the scientists that I brought it to, they couldn't find any suture marks in the head, which means it naturally was elongated. Um, the fingers and the toes, they, they had a, um, they definitely seemed biological. They didn't have pieces of other bones that didn't work. Now, if you remember, a lot of people have been bringing this up on my social media. The hand from 2016 that was a hoax um, literally had bones turned backwards into the Yeah, hand. you could, like, yeah, but, and, and, and to be very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, when I was going through all of this drama, Maria, and could, there was no, there's no, there wasn't anything. I, I looked so yeah. closely at the way that the wrist was connected to the, and I'm looking at regular, normal human x rays. There's tons of this mm -hmm. stuff online. And I'm looking I'm like, uh, that doesn't look fake. It, it looks just like it's a, a three fingered hand. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. it. Um, when you go and you look at the hoaxed uh, three-fingered hand, that thing is just mm -hmm. parts. It's pieces, it's yes. parts, and it's obviously uh, yes. fake. But uh, I want to make this comment. When you brought back, um, I've got noise coming from my Wi-Fi. I've got to move this box here. Hold on. Okay. There. Now, see, it's coming through my speakers. It's not coming through the system, but can you hear it? No, I can't hear it. You can't hear that. I can hear it. It's like a, like a machine gun. Mm. And and sometimes it just, it wants to be louder, and it's it's really bothering me now. Okay. Anyway, so you you come back and you've got uh, the, the X-rays and you go mm -hmm. in and I don't know if it's a podiatrist or a surgeon or a bone doctor, whatever. Uh, uh, you, um, and I don't want to mention, yeah, yeah I, I don't want to mention who she is or anything like that. That's not part of it. But mm -hmm. I remember this. She's looking at the X-rays and she goes, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, what am I looking at here? And that, for me, was very convincing. I mean, if it was, and they, they, they know, you know how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe you don't. But when 
when you have a sonogram done when you're pregnant, right? Okay. So you, the, the mother and father are there. They're looking at the son. They're looking at the image. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't. You're like, that's my kid. All right. I guess. What am I looking at? The specialist already knows boy, girl, age. They can see the heart. You know, they see everything. They can, they can tell you. And, um, and that's what a, a specialist can do, right? And, and mm-hmm. they know. And if it's BS, she's going to pull that thing down and just go, come on, man. Get this Barnum she, and Bailey yeah, stuff out of here. Don't waste my time. Don't yeah. waste my time. And that's not what don't happened, uh, was it? No. And um, I, I don't want to use the, I feel like I'm going to mess the words up that she said. But basically, she said the bones are definitely biological they they have a luminance to them that says they're not created bones um and she also couldn't find where their the bones were cut off to create a three finger hand or where it was shaved off or any of those cuts um the the bones themselves were unusual because they were so thick like if you were to look inside of a human hand our phalanges there's these tiny little pieces inside of our hands, but but these were like big bones. Like you, these fingers would have been just massive. Besides the fact that you can see them on that on that picture, they the, the fact that they would have skin around them on t- it just just massive claws almost. But yeah, so she, you know, she was just kind of like, I don't know what I'm looking. At. I, I, you know, it, she she would have said it was fake right away. So this was what I was like, wow, this is really interesting, you know, because she would have showed the whole point was her for her to look at it and say, this isn't right. This is a fake hand. This is whatever. Get out of my office. But she didn't. Yeah, there was a there's a few weird things I just want to point out and then uh, we'll, we'll move on. This is the skin from the inside of her elbow. And see how it's stretched and draped across her knees? Because Mm -hmm. that's what happens over thousands of years, right? And the decomposition. I found that very interesting. And that just doesn't look manufactured to me. And there's another shot here. Um, Oops, I jumped ahead. Sorry about that, everybody. If you look here, look look at the skin right here that looks like it's you know a couple of thousand years old you know look 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 at the shape and and the way that it has decomposed and look at it here look how it's that Mm -hmm. i i it just it just doesn't you know and it the way that it forms around the bones here it just looks like the Mm -hmm. skin that that was on this body when uh, she was alive. Yeah, the, I mean, um, I mean, I got to to touch the bodies with gloves on, of course. But um, what, felt, what, what was that like? Skin. Yeah, that that was my next question. Uh, I mean, so, I'm really, uh, I mean, I don't know what people what people of my thought process on like how I do investigations, but I'm usually pretty skeptical. You know, I did UFO witness with with Ben, and I was the less less skeptical one because Ben's really skeptical, right? But so I was kind of less skeptical, but for the most part, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, it's covered with some dust. And But when I touched it, I was like, what is that? You know, if that's fake, who, how are they making that? And there's lots of theories, um, you know, Steve Steve Mara and Barry Fritzscher, they, they did a documentary on how they made the skin and everything. And, and I, that's still mind blowing to me. Uh, be, because these people should work for Hollywood if, if they're making these things because it's pretty right. incredible because I actually had to touch it. I was like, that it, it was sort of creepy to be honest with you. Uh, so um, so we DNA, right? DNA takes a long time, but but there are a couple things that we tested right away that we were able to get results from. What is the white powder? So the white powder powder is a uh, diatomaceous earth. A diatomaceous earth you can you can buy at Walmart. You can go to Home Depot and buy diatomaceous earth. People people ingest it to get rid of parasites. It's it's very common. But I have to tell you something that made none of the news announcements that we had, or the um, or the documentary that's on Gaia. That's that's the complete story up until the point that we just stopped covering it. Is that um, the diatomaceous earth that was taken off the bodies of Maria and the small ones? 
specifically have a mineral makeup that are only from the Nazca region. And the way, the reason I know that is because we got a whole we got a whole makeup of the diatomaceous earth. I mean, diatomaceous earth is not all the same. It's not all the same structures of of dead plant uh, dead sea creatures, right? It's like There's it's like a it, it's like a would it be classic? It's like clay. Yeah, it's like clay, but it's like dead sea creatures and plants, right. and you know, it's just this. It, it, but but it's but but uh, I found a. Um, geologist in Arizona that specializes in, it goes into a field, into a archeology span dig and is able to test certain minerals and soils and stuff like that to figure out uh, composition and what time period it was and all that kind of stuff. And I sent it to him. He's like, I don't want to be on camera. <clears throat> you can't even record my voice. I don't want anything to do with this investigation. Aliens aren't my thing. And I said, okay. But he did say that um, he did, con he's like this mineral makeup, does specifically come from the region of Nazca, Peru. And um, that was in this chart. So I thought, wow, that's really, that's really interesting. So here we have, okay, if they made the bodies, then they took the diatomaceous earth from Nazca. They did not buy it at a local Peruvian. At Home Depot, right. Yeah. Right. So interesting. Could be. So this that was interesting to me. Maybe that means that it really was found in this cave that they said that they found the bodies or most of the bodies. Uh, for me, in this point of the investigation, I thought that was an interesting note. <clears throat> the other one was um, the dating actually surprised me. I mean, uh, carbon dating, Maria was 1700 years old. And that's pretty old. But, you know, like in the, the, the things that I write about, I feel like that's he's that's like a newbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's last week. <laughs> right. That's last right. week. That's not that yeah. old. And right, the little right. bodies were like 800 AD. I mean, it wasn't. They weren't like that old. It, so um, I don't know. It's uh, that was interesting to me. I didn't really know what to do with that information. So we're kind of sitting on that information for a while. We have the CAT scans, which are pretty detailed. So you can you can see all the bone structure, and the X rays, and many people from. Uh, from different countries, right? So Jaime uh, is talking to a, a group of people in Mexico that are analyzing them. Uh, Krokov uh, goes to St. Petersburg into the university at St. Petersburg. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, he employs a whole team there to actually look at them as well. And they all have sorts of opinions. They too can't find any uh, bones that are out of place. Um, and, and they're definitely really interested in the bodies and they are, we're all kind of waiting for the, the DNA to, uh, to do, to, to come out like, okay, so are these things real now DNA sampling is not from one area. So here we have the possibility we have this sketchy guy, Mario. I'm not sure about the Inkari Institute. We have a bunch of people involved that we're not sure what their motivations are. There, there's a lot of motivation around money, which makes it feel like it could be fake. Um, so we definitely have a lot of that going on. My pug is snoring. <laughs> yeah, I can hear. It's it's awesome, by the way. Somebody is in. <laughs> somebody me. is in. Yeah, somebody <laughs> is zenning out, man. <laughs> Full on REM sleep. Okay. So, yeah. And, and I asked Jay about this. I'm glad you bring up this point because um, I said, uh, I said to Jay, okay, so are you taking DNA from different parts of the body, uh, skin, bones, organs? Are you getting deep inside? Do you, get, you know, what, where, what parts of the body are you getting uh, your DNA uh, stuff from now i mm -hmm. want to know that and that's where you were going but the yeah. next thing are there any laws about getting uh, organic ancient organic material exported out of the country uh, for dna analysis are there any government regulations or things that you have to jump through to do that or are you allowed to just uh, do this and, and get it done i mean that's you're definitely not allowed to do that. I wasn't involved in that process. I can just say that. <laughs> uh, other people involved in that process. I'm not involved in that process, but um, because I'm not calling the labs and doing any of that. So, but yes, it's definitely not. Um, the, the bodies belong to Peru, whether they're, uh, and that's a really good point. I mean, I don't want to lose our like timeline here with what's happening, but I want to bring this up later 
because I have an opinion about that. Uh, when it comes to the bodies leaving Peru and uh, all the stuff that's happening right now. But um, yeah, there's definitely, yeah, there's, there's, um, there was many attempts even by myself. Like I actually reached out to the Ministry of Culture and I spoke to a woman there and I said, um, what do you think about, you've heard about these mummies, right? And she said, of course, we've heard about the mummies. And I said, well, how, how come none of the Ministry of Culture has come out to look at them? And, and she's like, well, we don't want to, we don't want to give any attention to it. You know, they should do x-rays and CAT scans. And I said, well, they have x-rays and CAT scans. Would you look at it, look at them? And she's like, they probably won't even look at them. And I thought, well, okay, that's where that's at. Um, so the like so people that are taking samples are um taking those samples from all different parts of the body could they have put a fake hand on and it doesn't match the same skin dna process uh on the on the body in different parts of the body right so if somebody made made the body right and they made the skin which of course is a theory and it could happen uh but the theory was, could they, uh, could they actually, could they, could the same composition be, be the, the same in all the different parts of the body? So any part was there skin, whether it was the neck, uh, the lower area, um, under the arm, uh, the, the feet, uh, both hands to make sure they matched and the feet, both feet. Uh, and then there was, I think another area on the leg they were able to take. So all certain parts of the body if it was manipulated at all. And, and that's, that's what they focused on to make sure that they and were. That, and that was, was that with Maria or was that with the small mummies from Cusco as well? Thank you for bringing that up. So the, it was only with Maria and, um, and with Wawita, which was the kind of the, the baby, the smaller ones, another red flag. Um, the smaller ones, we were not allowed to take any samples of that's no no DNA okay sample. so uh back to the dna analysis on maria uh what came mm -hmm. back did everything match everything matched uh from from all all the labs that were used so there was a lab in mexico there was a lab in russia and there was a lab in canada and all the data matched all the pieces were from the same body there wasn't a, a hand from a crocodile because crocodiles have hands and um <laughs> and right. uh different bones from and you know different compositions they're all the same composition so again that was interesting uh the big takeaway from the dna was that 25 percent of it matched any it, it had a human-like dna is 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 kind of the term i'll use 75 percent of it is unknown and that was kind of the big takeaway uh of of the dna um, <clears throat> that was after stripping it of bacteria components. Um, they were, you know, you got to think that they weren't like in a sealed lab, right? No, no, you it know, takes forever. It takes, it takes forever to clean mm -hmm. up the DNA, uh, to mm -hmm. remove all foreign material. So all you have left is DNA that you can test. And that's a long, 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 expensive, yeah. I might add, process. This isn't 23 and me. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is you're not doing a a swab in your mouth and sending this mm -hmm. off to uh, ancestry.com. This is right. a a very long process. So uh, to be clear here, am I understanding you correctly? So the DNA, the the lab from Canada, the lab from Mexico, and the lab from Russia, all mm -hmm. of their results matched and said the same thing. Yes. They were, they were all, you know, a couple percentages off or whatever. But uh, the, the only thing that was different was the Mexico one did detect um, a, um, like a, I think it was like bovine or something. They had like a, they had like a tiny sliver of, of uh, cow, it's, you know, some kind of relation to cows, uh, uh, you know, DNA wise. Uh, it was very like if they show a pie chart. <clears throat> when they do their reveal, um, if you end up watching the documentary and there's a sliver that talks about how like they picked up this bovine, but the other ones, um, they've kind of stripped it of the bacteria and the components. So the other, the thought process was at this point, okay, 
that's pretty unusual. So, um, but let's be scientists here. Let's still like not like jump to conclusions. Anybody in the group <laughs> mm -hmm. that uh, this is an alien or let's just, let, there's still the possibility of these sketchy characters involved um, that, that it could be still a hoax. It's so good fake. And it's just really good. They just really did a good job. Or the other thing is in the uh, genome, the human genome project, there's still not uh, Neanderthal DNA, if you will, or indigenous populations, right? That's a whole nother set of genome, a genome project that needs more samples to run those questions. Okay, fine. Maybe it's not for the modern human DNA that's been collected on this planet and is in the human genome project. Okay, but maybe it matches something more on the scale of, of the Homo sapien line, and we have to get that's a whole other DNA test. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. But that's a whole other DNA test. That's not, remember, we asked one question How, uh, what percentage of this is human DNA? Modern human DNA. And that is what the results came back with, because you can only ask one question. Uh, I, uh, you know, I interviewed somebody, it was a really interesting interview and, and, you know, it, because I wanted it to be balanced. And, and this guy, um, he, uh, he works with the coroner's office. He, he runs a university program. Um, he's a pathologist and that kind of stuff. And I said, you know, when you're running DNA, um, how does it work, you know, from the, for the aspect of like asking the one question. And he's like, it's also the way that you ask the question, and he gets too specific about what that means, meaning it's way over most people's heads of how you're running the DNA into the program. But for the most part, if you're if you're looking for the answer to be something, and this is with everybody's belief systems, we'll put it that way, you can run that question and try to find an answer within that set of belief systems. And I say this because Steve Mara and Barry Fitzgerald also did their own tests and they came back with the fact that it was completely fabricated from the, from the testing sites they used in, uh, I believe Sri Lanka. They're testing from, and again, I wasn't involved in their investigation. So I don't know if they took pieces from, from all like we, like that the people did that we were working with it and how they did it, but <clears throat> their results were the whole thing was completely fabricated, made up of all sorts of different animals, and they had the data to prove it and from their lab. The reason I'm bringing both of this up is that, again, Jimmy, as we started this conversation, it's not about proving if they're right or wrong, but we have, let's say, four sets of DNA, three sets of them kind of on the same page, the other one on a different page, but maybe they asked... A slightly different question. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. And Barry and and Steve, and, and by the way, I mean, for transparency, Melissa mm -hmm. and I were just hanging out with them, and yeah. they are very dear totally. friends. I love those guys. Yep. Love those guys to exactly. death. Exactly. Um, and <laughs> and we were literally just uh, having dinner, hanging out uh, for a week uh, with those guys. So, yeah, uh, and they're respect. the best. That's why I'm saying complete respect. Saying complete respect. Complete respect. We can't respect. not talk about this stuff and not talk about their research, right? Yeah, so. you can't. You can't. You can't. And and it, for me, it's just uh, uh, something where history's got to play itself out. We, that that's what we need uh, independent research we need different universities mm -hmm. university yeah. level staffs and laboratories uh, to come in and all do their independent studies on this from multiple parts of of tissue and and uh, and anthropologists and biologists and and everybody just go and 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 check this out just so we can get the answers that's all i don't know I don't yeah. know. I, I I I don't know. I'm right in the middle on this, but then. I mean, um, but but let me let let me say this. When Jaime, when this resurfaces uh, with Jaime, he has now gone and done a pretty thorough set 
of, of due diligence. And he did a pretty effective presentation. All right. Now, what my concern is with Jaime, who I actually like the guy, I do, I do but too. he has he has stumbled and fell a few times. And mm-hmm. so there are those out there, and rightly so, are going to say, yeah, but, okay, here we have the mummies, but we have who is presenting the mummies. And that will always be an issue. And Jaime is well aware of that. So he's put together, and so I think that he tried to do his best to make sure that everything was covered. And so he brings in a a, a naval surgeon um, uh, uh, from Mexico, brings in a biologist, brings in uh, an anthropologist, um, and and uh, everything gets done. He presents that evidence, and they said thirty percent. DNA on these other mummies, which I'm going to show in just a second. Mm -hmm. But here's the other interesting part. After the presentation, two things happened. Number one, Peru, the government of Peru, announced earlier this week that they are bringing charges against Jaime Musan for removing what they are calling pre-Peruvian artifacts. pre Peruvian artifacts out of the country without permission. That's what I'm saying. Right. So Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. pretty now. Now all of a sudden they're interested in this. Jaime goes and gets the DNA analysis done. He has the CT scans done. He has the x-rays done, does his presentation Mm -hmm. in front of the Mexican Congress. Well, they got out of the country uh, pretty easily and Peru didn't care about that. Now all of a sudden they care. Is it because that the analysis is is not on the hoax side of the fence, and now there is a concern here culturally, which there should be. I'm not arguing that point. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, no. you know, they didn't care before, right? And they told you the same thing, right? ah, whatever. Yeah. And, no. and and no. now all of a sudden there's this, and then the, another thing happened. Second thing happened. Same uh, on the same day on Monday. Today's Friday. On Monday. It was announced that they did a new analysis. Uh, The announcement was on Tuesday. The analysis was done on Monday. Um, Again, by the Mexican military, specifically the Navy, and Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of other doctors, they they shot everything. So it's all on on video. Mm -hmm. Uh, CT scans, uh, fresh uh, x-rays, and they released a report. And the doctor who is like the chief surgeon of the Navy, right? And every branch of the military has got your your surgeon general, yeah. so to speak, right? And so he comes and he says and he states uh, that the mummies are whole and intact and they are not from different different pieces, that they are whole structures. And that was... And they and they they show the CT scans going down. They show the doctor. I might have an image here. Um, mm-hmm. Here is the doctor, uh, right here. There he is. This guy looks serious too. Check him out. So there he is, and that's how tiny this little dude is. You know, I have the power. It's a little <laughs> tiny. You know, it almost looks like the spine is in the front too. It's it's kind of a weird, uh, weird yeah. thing. So anyway, um, yeah. So all of this, uh, you know, it came out on Monday, and it forces all of us just to step back and go, okay, really, what's going on here? You know, yeah. if the analysis consistently points in another direction, um, mm-hmm. and then the the other part, I want I want I wanted to ask you about this. There is a hoaxing factory down there there's a lot of this yeah. man selling the stuff to tourists right i've, right. I've seen I've, I've seen rows rows of mini mm-hmm. ones that look just like this but you know they're all put they're obviously fake you know with the three fingers and they're all put together and they're all covered in white dust and they're all, but they're like and they're they're for sale to the tourist right so there is a whole you know cottage industry of of selling these mummies on the streets right yeah, and um, 
Yes, yes, I've definitely heard that. And and it again, if if these things are not real, then that makes sense, right? I mean, these people are really good at their job, if if that's the case. And um, you know, we don't want to rule that out, but yes, there there is that. And then are the same people involved? Um, but but the thing is, the story has two sides of it. In no matter if you're a believer or a non-believer. There's sketchy characters, there's there's people doing things to create money. There's also the concept of like, um, is the story coming out to create uh, the um, to cr to create some kind of need for these these creatures on the black market? You know what I mean? Like it gets a little ugly and gross if you start to think about it. but I but I will say that um, we we really wanted to take this seriously. we We wanted to come back. And okay, we need to get deeper into this. We need to ask more questions. And we need to keep begging yes, the ministry of culture to get involved. Yeah. And we brought more scientists. We brought more scientists to be involved. And this is where it got super sketchy. Uh, Jimmy, you're going to love the story because I don't think you've ever heard it. <laughs> Let's go. We have, all these science, we have all these scientists in Cusco. And somehow, Terry from the Incari Institute, what you guys need to do is. If you're interested in this and you're not really sure what to believe, I think you definitely need to check out this, this uh, documentary on Gaia, on Earthy Nazca, the complete story. Um, and also the other side of the coin, Steve Mara also, also uh, and Barry Fitzgerald have a documentary that I think that's on Amazon about the Nazca mummies and their version of it. So if you really want to get the full story. Um, so there's this moment in the documentary uh, where I have all the scientists there. And we, we're going to, we're going to ask these bigger questions. We're going to, we're going to, we want to get CT tomography. We want to really see like how, if, if this, if this was a really living being, like how do the, how would the muscles have wrapped around the bone? Uh, this pretty amazing uh, imagery. Um, so we're there we're with, with the Russian brought more some Russian, more science scientists. I brought some scientists from America. There's all these people here and Terry somehow leaves. He's like, I'm not in the country, even though he knew we were coming <laughs> and we, uh, you know, we, we do our thing and, you know, do some interviews and everything, but you know, we're there to do what we came there to do. We're outside his place. And we just keep calling him. He's like, oh, I'm landing soon or, you know, I'll be landing soon. And then Jaime was calling from Mexico saying he was landing soon. And I'm like, something is off. I'm like, let's pull the bus around the corner so that we have we have a view of the alleyway of the Ankari Institute. And let's tell Jaime that we left and we just we gave up. And so Jaime says, OK, I'll tell him. And we wait. And you know who walks out of the Ankari Institute? Terry. <laughs> and I'm like, aha. I got you. We're coming in. <laughs> and this is in the uh, this is in the documentary where we ask him, we're like, we are all here to continue the investigation. Like we all wanted to in the beginning. Like, what's going on? Well, I didn't have it, I didn't know, and I and I don't know what you guys are planning on doing. And it was just so weird. It was so sketchy. I was like, what is happening? we can't and at that point it was the beginning of the end um, we had to just be like okay we need this needs to get to the authorities and at that point and we didn't get any more answers Krokov went back he he him and Jaime actually got shown to where the cave was supposedly we're not sure if that's a real cave <clears throat> um did have the same diatomaceous earth but one thing that Krokov was able to do, he was able to touch the bodies one more time and he was able to get the CT tomographies, which are in the documentary, <coughs> excuse me, which are really interesting. Like you, you can really see the joints in the bone and how they, they, they existed and even the fingers and, and the toes and the, the, the neck and how it's attached. And it, yeah, it's, it, it was, it was, it was really cool. I mean, just from an analyzation point, I'm not saying they're real or anything, but definitely <clears throat> really interesting. At this point in the story, the Peruvian parliament wants to do a hearing because they're, they've had enough. Everyone keeps bugging them to get involved. And so the Ministry of Culture is like, we're not getting involved. <clears throat> 
we need to have a hearing about this because it's getting out of control. <coughs> Sorry. Let me take a drink of water. Mm. So they do a huge hearing. I mean, there all the doctors are there. They present all their evidence. The Ministry of Culture is like, it doesn't matter. We think it's fake. And they should, this should be outlawed. It doesn't matter how much scientific evidence there is. The Congress was like, this is really interesting, but we don't really know what to do with the information. After the, after the parliament hearing, they decided to move the bodies to a university in Ica. Uh, and that is where they were left to do more anal uh, analysis, analyzing of the bodies uh, and then and update us on how, how they were doing. But at that point, we're no. like, okay, it's in your hands. Okay, which bodies went to uh, um, the university? Was it Maria and Wawita and the two mummies that that Jaime has now from Cusco? Was it how many? What went to the university? I know that Maria um, did, and I know that Maria Wawita did. did, but yeah. And um, and I and we believed at the time that the smaller bodies went there as well because now everybody knows where they are. So they're not safe. They got to go somewhere and they need to be, they need to actually be in a, a safe sealed setting for actual uh, data processing. And so they went to the university and then we kind of never heard anything again. I mean, that was like 2018. They just disappeared. Like I hadn't heard one update. Um, there was a couple times that Jaime had reached out to Gaia and said, the university's in danger. Um, you know, the government wants to take the bodies, um, but they're they're doing some really groundbreaking tests, but we never saw anything. So I, you know, <clears throat> I don't know what happened, but but it was really crazy because just at the moment where we were trying to gather more information, to ask more questions, to really get into what these things could be is when it got super crazy and everybody was kind of turning against each other. And, and I don't know who was working for who or how it was working. Um, but at that point, we definitely had gathered a, enough data to talk about it. But I mean, that's kind of where it was left. And then all of a sudden, the smaller bodies show up at the Mexican congressional hearing and Jimmy and I are like. <laughs> I, you know, how did they get, how did, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, only Jaime knows. But how did they get out of uh, Peru? Now, I want to bring up uh, this image here, which I'll never forget the first time I saw it, either this one or one similar to this. This one um, may be uh, from the congressional hearing. But mm -hmm. so you look at this uh, image, and during the hearing. The surgeon says a couple of things that I didn't know that were pretty mind-blowing. He said that the head and neck were retractable. Mm -hmm. oh, that was a, that was a good that was a good pug snore right there. That was a good that was a good pug <laughs> snore. Uh, that I, I, hope, I hope that better be the pug. And if it wasn't, uh, that shrimp scampi you had for dinner. So, so anyway, so hungry. <laughs> so, um, uh, so the, he made that comment, uh, uh, about this x ray. And then, of course, the three eggs that are there. And my, mm -hmm. I said from the very beginning, if you've got three eggs, that's a, a CT scan, C. Just cut this thing open and get those eggs out. And and what what are they? If this if this is sixty centimeters long, those eggs are like this big. They're the size of jelly beans, right? They're not very big. You know. Yeah, I wish you, I I wish you had the scans, the CT tomography scans, because they were able to. And this is in the documentary. They were able to actually take them and cut them in half. Cause it's like, uh, you know, refractable light. So they're like able to cut them in half and show us in and they, they found like a little embryo. Of what? I don't, I don't a, know. Just, that's what it looks turtle? like. Is it a turtle? <laughs> Is it a Robin's egg? You know, I mean, it I, could be, it could be anything. I mean, right. I mean, yeah. again, if, if these, if these are all hoax bodies, they could be. 
these people have done an incredible job of masking all the things, like creating enough evidence to lead you on a path to, to grab enough information and, and then kind of like leave you out of the dust. You know, it's like we now, get, we get it, DNA samples, we have dating, we have we're putting the pieces together. I just, it's almost now like, we have this, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. We have the, the, the chest plate, is the curious thing uh, for me uh, because mm. apparently um, it's made of an extremely rare earth metal, uh, like a rare earth um, mm -hmm. that is only, uh, well, it's, it's in, but, but deep in the earth, right? So it's, it's hard to find. And, mm -hmm. If you were going to hoax this, why are you going to use one of the rarest, hardest to acquire uh, uh, metals on this planet uh, for a hoax? I, that that part I don't understand. And so now let's say it's not a hoax. And I don't know mm -hmm. if it is or if it isn't. But if it's not a hoax, then 1,700 years ago or 800 years ago or 100 years ago, it doesn't matter. How did you collect that much of this metal to fabricate this? That's my hmm. point. This is not something that you just go down again to Home Depot and, and mm -hmm. buy a bucket full of, of this metal. Uh, and that's, that's a very, very interesting part uh, about this. What do you, what do you make of the breastplate? Um, I, I, um, I, I yeah I do agree with you. If if this is if this is real, I mean why? And if, if it's fake, like why make why find? How do you find that? And then it, as it with it being a rare metal, it, it has to. How does it form into that form? Right? There's lots of rare earth elements, but they don't necessarily form in their natural form. Like like create things like a breastplate. So um, yeah, the breastplate. The, the small bodies were really hard for me, Jimmy. I got to be honest with you. Um, I think as a journalist, I thought, let's figure out if Maria's fake first, and then I can wrap my body around these <laughs> small creatures because they they definitely didn't function uh, correctly. And and I and if I remember correctly, and I know that it's been proven, the baby Wawita was manipulated, and so she's been kind of ruled out completely. Like hundred percent. So, I think um, I think I, I, you're onto something too. I mean, they did find cadmium chloride in uh, on the skin of these uh, in the DNA, right? So as they're splitting and they're taking out the stuff and separating it, that was one thing that they found on all the samples was cadmium chloride. Now, cadmium chloride is used in the making of textiles, but cadmium by itself is a, a rare element. So here again, you have interesting parts of the story. One of them seems like maybe they used it in uh, construction. And then the other part is, you know, maybe it's, it's uh, you're, you're picking up this rare element cadmium. If, uh, if, if this is, Again, I'm I'm in the middle on this, but let's look at this with uh, an objective pair of eyes. Th these these feet, I I it just doesn't. I've seen other. I've, I've got more images too as well. That just doesn't look like somebody with a Dremel and some super glue in their living room putting something together. It just it's got it. It looks very natural and biological. <laughs> and then look at the knees, look at the hips, and look and just. And then if you go up and you look at the rib cage, which I this is one of the uh, most intriguing uh, parts of of all of this is when you look here. That just doesn't. It, you would be able to. It seems like any biologist would look at this and go. Uh, uh, that's from uh, a, a giant goldfish. 
or whatever. You know, I don't know. But but yeah. it, it seems yeah. like you would know where a rib cage like that originates from if it is constructed from parts. Right. Well, I mean, my big question for Jaime's, you know, presentation that's now is did anybody do any DNA testing on these smaller bodies? Because as I told you, we were not allowed to touch them at all. So there is no, no he did. DNA. No, he, no, he, he did. did. Okay. And uh, yeah, okay. and it was 30% human ish, 70% mm -hmm. completely unknown to anything on, on earth. Wow. So their That's number, so their number. Yeah, their number almost the same as yours. You, 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 mm -hmm. you guys came back to twenty five percent on these bodies. Thirty yeah. percent human like, seventy mm -hmm. percent unknown, unknown, mm -hmm. unknown. Hey, you know what? What's the typical? Uh, I meant to ask you this earlier, just for mm -hmm. comparison. Um, if if in human DNA, how much of it is human, right? <laughs> This is a normal um, human DNA. All of it? How much? Of, uh, well, wait, wait. And how much of it is unknown? Do we have any unknown DNA in our DNA? Oh, I mean, yes, right. We have junk DNA. Yeah, but, right. I mean, that's right. actually a really good question. I've actually mm, I, I because mean, I don't actually, it, I it, don't have an answer to that question. What like what the what's the percentage of junk DNA? Versus, I think it's um, I think it's 70 30. I think it, we have 70% DNA human, mm -hmm. right? And then 30% is junk. And yeah. you know what? Somebody in the chat junk. it's just called unknown. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Somebody in the chat room will pop up uh with that. Uh uh, hey Bill, uh genocide, uh what what is the percentage in normal human DNA? How much of it is human and mm -hmm. how much of it is junk? How much of it is junk DNA? Um, the 30 per, oh, Zenza Bill just said the 30% is unknown. Okay. All right. Bill is, it's 7% unknown DNA. Okay. Come on. You guys, I need some real answers here. Is it 30? Is it seven? It can't be, <laughs> it can't be that kind of variance. But I've just, I've wondered about that. And if you look at, at at this, I don't know how you would, and this is so interesting to me, uh, Melissa, how mm -hmm. would you, if you were going to uh, put together, I build models. I build car models. I, I've, I've got a, a crazy amount of tools. I've got mm -hmm. an amazing workbench. I can make anything. I can build anything. I have the capacity to do that. I don't know how you would form bones to fit other bones that aren't from, you know what I mean? How, how are you going to, how are you going to mix and match chicken bones, chihuahua bones, monkey bones, human bones, right. pig bones, and then, cow bones, bird and bones. Then, I don't know. Yeah. And not, and, and leave it in such a way where you can't see the markings. Right. And, I mean, and, and fool and fool the medical community. That's the part. And I guess it's possible because if these are hoax, then they did do just that. And that's probably so I, more. What What would yeah. you rather have? Would you rather have these be alien and be real or know that some hoaxer out there can pull this off? <laughs> what's what's worse? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's super creepy. But yeah, you're, you're totally right. And. I, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, when you ever, you're watching like a, like a crime show and there's like a serial killer and, and it's, it's like a, it's like a docu-series, right? And you know what the serial killer always wants to do? He, he gets bored. He wants to be caught. So he starts coming out more, right? It's kind of like if these are hoax and people are making them or one person is making them, uh, they're, they're getting, they're, they're, they're making them, so, they're just, they're doing, they're like, they're getting, they're, they couldn't sit still anymore. You know, 2018, they're like, that's it. Jaime Musan, bring them back out in the public. <laughs> we we need to sell more of these. Yeah. Yeah, we need to sell more of these type of things. Like, now, it's just, it's insane. It's insane. It, yeah. That's all and, I gotta and say. And you, you, you bring up a really good point. Uh, and, and a legitimate one. Serial killers don't want to be unknown. 
They want to be named. They want to have a nickname, right? They want to be in the press. They want to be able to do that. They, they want all of that. And if you are the person that created this, wouldn't you want some notoriety now? I mean, what's the purpose of this? You're not making any money. So that that's taken off the table, right? There's there's nothing there. Uh, well, the only... I mean, I think that they, they make money every time the price goes up every time that it becomes, it gets into the press, right? So, you know, now they're making well, money. Sort of, but this is what but the, the only person uh, making, the only uh, are the DNA labs. <laughs> they're the only ones making the money. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe they do want this hoax to continue so they can get some more lab time. Um, but, yeah, that's, there isn't anybody here. Uh, this isn't some lucrative thing. So I would think that the hoaxer would would want to come forward and 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 write a book, do a documentary on how we pulled it off. Well, I mean, the I think the reason why they're not talking about Maria, I mean, why in 2023 we're only talking about the small bodies and not Maria. Well, we uh, I think is a waste of time. It, it's already been proven. It's been manipulated. Um, you know, and then again, the question is, was that in the past or is that just recently? But but it's already been ruled out. Um, but the fact that like we had so much data on Maria that was just strange. We'll call it strange just to say neutral that like Jaime hasn't even brought it up. He's just focused on these small bodies. So what happened to Maria? Right. Is there lots of testing going on with Maria that we don't know about? And then these have been kind of set free or is the hoaxer getting bored and wanting to have more of its, his work out there? Because remember, I remember this. I remember uh, it, all the characters I've explained had you know, like a little level of sketch to them, right? So is everybody getting money on the side to, to do their little part of it? Maybe. That makes sense, right? But, the, um, but we were told that there was a huge cave with all the bodies and there was a family. There was a whole family of these things that lived there. And the story just kept getting bigger and bigger. I don't know if it's true or not, but but that would be a continuation of these these bodies, if you will. Here is, uh, yeah. <laughs> now let him go, let him go. He's just having a good time. He's just having a good time. Uh, now, uh, coming back to this image, um, the... The recent uh, CT scan and X-rays of uh, the skull area that I saw, I couldn't, I couldn't get anything uh, recent uh, from the video. Um, I, well, I did, but I don't want to get into trouble with showing somebody else's uh, video on this show, so I okay. couldn't do that. But the uh, the the recent CT scan of this m mummy's head. That that looks like a complete skull. As crazy as this face looks and the shaping of it and everything else, it's contiguous. The skull is contiguous. The face is continuous. The, the bones of, around the eye, the eyebrow, it's all contiguous. It it doesn't, it just doesn't look faked. I, I I I don't I am so now I, I don't think anybody wants this to be real more than me or the rest of the community. Of course we do, right? But here's the other part. I am I, I do not want uh to be disappointed and I don't want people to be bummed out uh either. So don't go all in on this and I'm doing my best uh to do just that, just to pull back. <laughs> Because if it's real, okay, we get to have a holy crap moment. If it's not, mm -hmm. okay, well, what did, what else did you expect, right? Okay, and at least you don't you don't fall into some deep psychosis, right, and, and like lose yeah. your mind. But I've seen the CT scan on this, and as crazy as it sounds, it looks whole and intact. And that's what the naval surgeon uh, said in his report. Jimmy, don't you think, okay, listen, we, we've all been back in time talking about 2017 where everyone doesn't remember it ever happening. Uh, and now it's such a big deal. Do you think that the consciousness of understanding because of all the news happening, I'd say since 2020 with, uh, 
the Navy videos coming out. People are people. It's more in the zeitgeist. The idea of aliens being real and government organizations getting more involved, people pressuring government organizations. I mean, it's like top news all over the place, whether you're in it or not, whether you're the neighbor down the street or you're the hardcore person, there's there's elements of people talking about it. I feel that just in a matter of a couple of years, the zeitgeist is right for people to, to look at this and discuss it. In 2017, we weren't there yet because everybody forgot it already. And for some reason, I think that this, this, you know, a lot of people, there's been a couple of people in my social media that said, you know, this don't look here. This is a distraction from what's really happening. But if you're really investigating if aliens are real, you're going to keep your eyes everywhere. And you can't discredit something because it looks completely fake. Really look into all the pieces of why it existed in the first place before making a decision. And I would say that about any UFO, alien story, big story on the New York Times or small story on Reddit, right? Uh, I think yeah. that we're at an age now of information coming from anywhere to create a, uh, a dichotomy all the time is sort of a waste of time because we're not getting the answers by fighting each other on what's real or not. Of course, there's going to, you know, it doesn't have to be an alien body. It could just be somebody coming out and saying they had an alien experience and they're, and they're bringing it to a larger audience. I mean, we really got to, we really got to just take things with a grain of salt and, and listen to the all sides of, of the information before making a decision and, and so that they, we can and, really and, embrace it. Yeah. And, and that's where we are today. And I'm, I'm, uh, that's, I'm happy that the conversation is occurring. Um, but here, here is the problem is that somebody's belief system uh, is is where it is. It's very difficult to change somebody. That's it. You mm -hmm. are, you know, who who gets who gives in to pressure and has their mind changed on anything. Mm -hmm. The color of a car, right? Oh, dude, you should have got the blue one. Oh, okay, I'll take it back and get the blue. No, it's not going to happen. It just it's just the way it is. Now you read my mind. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Well, you should have got the yellow one, by the way. And 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 here's the thing. The uh, the evidence is out there for those that want this to be a hoax. All they've got to do is go look at the three fingered documentary and look at the x-rays and look at the, the, the bones in there look like uh, they were put in a bottle and shook up, right? That's what they look like. Yeah. It's, it looks That's like, what they look pills. like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all, it's all randomized. And so they, that's their evidence. They don't want to go look at uh, DNA. They don't want to look at different bodies. They don't want to look at anything else. That's what they saw. That's that's their conclusion. You're not going to change mm -hmm. those people's minds. It's the other uh, segment of society that's hearing this for the first time, that is seeing the DNA evidence, that is seeing the research uh, d dipping back into it over and over again, and they're looking at it with a fresh set of eyes. That's what's different between now and 2008. So, and and wh where do we go from here? What do you think the next step will be? Do you think that uh, uh, Peru is going to get their mummies back? Uh, do you think that Jaime may have gotten himself into a bit of a pickle, or yeah. did Jaime do the did Jaime do the right thing by getting this out there in a public in a press conference live on TV? So there's no discussion about this, and here it is. Now let's talk. So I feel that, uh, first of all, you're right. How did he get them out of Peru? Like he just put them in his duffel bag and like, you know, like put them through the scanner and, and nobody said anything like what's going on here, people. Um, private but, plane, you know, private from, plane, private plane, private plane. Love it. It's like an adventure movie. Um, mm -hmm. I think what's really interesting here that we got to think about is like earlier in the story when I was saying that, that multiple times people reached out to the Ministry of Culture to be involved. And they didn't want anything to do with it until it got too many people poked them and said, what, you aren't going to do anything about these mummies? And that's it. Like, that's it. We're having a congressional hearing. We're doing a part, you know, at the parliament, blah, blah, blah. I think people poked. They didn't care because they don't want anything to do with it. And then people kept poking them and they're like, okay, now we're mad. We're mad. We're mad. We're bringing charges. That's kind of what where Peru is at with that. 
Jaime, um, lovable guy. Great. He's been in the space for a long time. He has a lot of evidence, but you know, he gets a little excited. He, you know, he's the first person to say something is an alien before it's an alien. And even though there's lots of data, he sort of has a track record for that. So people mm -hmm. are going to rake him over the coals for that. That doesn't mean he's a bad person or journalist or any of that at all. It's just that he's jumped to the conclusion really fast in the past. And I, I, that, that kind of, leaves its mark, you know, if you will. Yeah, well, you and I have oh, you and I have a lot of friends, mutual friends that go alien right out of the gate. Dude, so yep. have you seen this video? Check this video out. This man, it's 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 Bigfoot uh mm -hmm. coming through, you know, check it and I'm, dude, come on. You know, mm -hmm. and 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 we all have those mm -hmm. friends and and Jaime, yeah, I, I think Jaime can fall into that category where yep. uh, it, you get a little bit excited too fast. And, you know, mm -hmm. okay, is it an endearing quality? Kind of. I mean, I don't we all need that in our lives <laughs> to some degree? <laughs> um, but, yeah, but, uh, when, but, yeah. but but here's here's the other but. point, though. Here's the other point. I, I I think this is how it went down. Jaime does his press conference to broadcast live. They're watching it in Peru, right? They are. They're mm -hmm. watching it in Peru. And they don't know what's about to happen. He wheels these mummies out on stage. They're like, wait, 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 wait. Aren't those the mummies in the basement? Aren't those the uh, ones at uh, Gustavo, University? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gustavo, <laughs> go downstairs and, and check the storage locker. Gustavo comes back. The mummies are gone. What? <laughs> Maria's still there. I think that's there, how it went down. But the small ones are gone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maria, they didn't take Maria too big. <laughs> Maria's yeah. too big. But, um, but I think that's how it went down. And they got pissed off. You know, somebody's mm -hmm. got to answer for this. Uh, they didn't know. Uh, that they were gone until Jaime <laughs> rolls those things out on stage and goes, check this out. And uh, I, I think that's that. I think that's why they're bringing charges. I, I I don't know this as a fact, but I think that's how it went down. They didn't know those mummies were gone until Jaime did it on live TV. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But again, they, they don't necessarily want to be involved until there's a reason to be involved. And now there's a reason to be involved, you know? They don't yeah. want to. They don't want to actually give any credence to any of this because if it is a hoax, which they 100 percent, most of the people in the Ministry of Culture believe it is, it discredits uh, what their uh, their heritage for one, and number two, uh, it actually increases grave robbers looking for graves and trying to sell things at the black market, of course, which is which is illegal, and um, okay, that is what I'm they're about. I'm going to show you an image uh, that was sent to me. Okay, are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to show you this. And where is it? Did I did I pass it? And I thought it was in a text. It must have been in an email. Then I would have to dig it up. Okay, this is bad live radio. Um, somebody sent me a text of a market in, in Peru mm -hmm. with oh, a table. Okay. Okay. Like 50 mummies just lined up different sizes, right? You want the ones for two ninety nine, and they're laid out. There's like 40 of them, right? Mid size, right? And they're all, you can just tell, right? All covered in, in, in the white powder. A couple of them are a little bigger and they're all laid out on this black, cloth on on this table for sale in in the market there you know now these are you know obviously you know you know made with you know, clay and baked in an oven and covered with powder and and you know they're trinkets uh but yeah you know this is this is so, something that is not uh uh not a secret uh in in peru you know, the, 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 the real fake stuff. I mean, they're selling the stuff like, you know, little King Tut, uh, onks. Yeah. You know, you yeah, know yeah. What I mean? yeah. It's, uh, you go all over Egypt, um, uh, and, and you can, you can buy 
anything that you want anywhere all the time. It's 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 what they do, and they're doing that now in Peru. I I thought that that image was on my phone. I thought you would get a kick out of it. Well, I think that the next yeah, step is is uh, uh, I think that Jaime did the right thing by doing this. That there is a lot to answer for here, and that. Uh, we need as many independent, and I don't care, uh, official government, uh, universities, uh, independent researchers, professional laboratories, uh, companies, corporations, uh, Sandia National Labs. It doesn't matter to me. Los Alamos, would they be interested in this and the atomic structure of, of what's going on here? Well, so, I, but, I, get, but I think, yeah, I think most of these people think it's fake. I don't think they want anything to do with it. But it would, you're right. It would be nice. Somebody like if, let's just say Los Alamos takes it over. They do all the testing and they're like, it's fake or something's weird here. And then of course we will never see it again. <laughs> but at least then we would know there is definitely something to it because it has now disappeared completely. That's all Man, I have to this say. Is such a, this is such a good movie. I mean, not a documentary. I mean, this need, this is like a movie movie. This is it totally. just... Yeah, it's, it's too good. Melissa, too thank good. you so much. Uh, what are you working on now? What's what's next? Um, What's next? Uh, Billy and I have been working on uh, the Anunnaki show that's coming out. So it'll be a series. That'll be kind of fun and cool. Um, Code 12 is going to come out soon. A couple months. <laughs> Uh, so that'll be, that'll be good. And um, yeah, I got a couple of things in the hopper. But yeah, not really alien related except for the anunnaki stuff which we'll get into a little bit of aliens but what, what about the what about the thing that we shot together is that gonna ever come out yeah yeah in a couple months it's called code 12 oh that's what it's see i never got the title melissa just goes jimmy i need you on set uh here's your call time <laughs> and uh and i was there i was on time i was on time that was a great <laughs> shoot that was a lot of fun so that's that's now called code 12 it's called code 12 yeah Okay, yep. fantastic. And and the release date you think is in a couple of months? Yes. Uh I'm waiting for Amazon to give me a release date. And then um and then it'll definitely be on 4BK. So we'll make that announcement when it's gonna be right. there and a couple other a couple of locations. So it'll be super fun. Did and, I did I make um, the did I did I make the final cut? You you did, but um Oh. This is a little insider. You guys haven't seen. You guys haven't seen the movie, but I lost my voice completely. <laughs> so, That's right. Did my so Jeep make we, the final cut? Did my Jeep make the final Jeep, cut? Your voice. You know some of the things you said, but uh, but like it was it was unsalvageable. You guys, I lost my voice completely. Like it was like, uh, right, Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I thought we agreed that I would do the voiceover for you. So I could have been uh, talking to myself. That would have been yes. really fun. Can you imagine if did, I was speaking and Jimmy's voice was coming out? <laughs> that would have been amazing. Melissa, thank you so much. Be safe and be well. Get back to work. You just got off a plane. You came on tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate it. Thank Where you, you so much. Have, just, just have a great night, and I'll talk to you later this weekend. All right. Thank you, Jimmy, so much. Melissa Tittle, everybody, Hather Studios, okay? And uh, the links for Melissa are below. We've got them there in social media, and you can check out everything that she is doing. And I guess I just got the word. Uh, the film is called Code 12. So when that gets released, we'll have Melissa back, and I can't wait to see it. So everybody, yes, <laughs> check out Melissa doing the thumbs up. Yay! <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Now I'm going to take a take a couple of days off, and I'll see you right here on Monday. On Monday, we have a very, very special ancient alien show right here. I've got David Hatcher Childress. I've got William Henry, and I've got Nick Pope. All three are on the show together at the same time with me, and that is Monday here on Fade to Black. You're not going to want to miss that. And with that, I am out of here. Everybody have a great, safe, fun, and amazing weekend. Fade to Black, as we all know, is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee Newman, and Michelle Freed. 
Thank you to Dennis and Kevin. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldridge. Intro, Spaceboy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2023 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Go back, Lee Tappy.